What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm your host, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Hello. So since since we're still in this, like, post-Summer Games Fest malaise, and since we covered, like, all the news last week, uh, there's, like, no news this week. Like, we really had to scrape uh, the bottom of the news barrel for the two stories that we have. And I, and I would argue that the two stories that we have for the news this week are only tangentially related. To video games like they're not even they're not even video game news per se uh but they have video game tie-ins um but that's fine because i've actually been playing a lot of new games uh lately so because um because i'm not feeling like i want to get into final fantasy 16 right and i had that i had that time like booked in my head canon um I, I've ventured on other things so i'm still playing diablo 4 and we'll talk about that in a second because i've i've vanquished the campaign um, and I'm still playing, well, I, I've been playing Street Fighter as much as I like. Like, I feel like with Street Fighter, I want to clear my deck and actually just really get, you know, get down in the Street Fighter for a couple weeks. I've just been dabbling so far and that hasn't been, it, it's hard just to dabble in Street Fighter. Um, yeah. but Steam also had, is having their summer sale right now. So I picked up a lot of games that had been on my, on my list to check out for cheap. And so I've talked on this show before about how I'm really enjoying uh, Super Mega Baseball 4, and I and, and its predecessor as well. And one of the things that I like about it is that it's not afraid to really have fun um, and to be, like, earnestly goofy and charming in a way that, like, MLB The Show can't be. And it's because MLB The Show is an officially licensed Major League Baseball game. So they have to present, like, the most pristine image of major league baseball that they possibly can so you're not so you're not gonna it's not gonna be overly fun and celebratory and you're also (laughs) not gonna get like the realism um of like a player getting suspended for 80 games because of he tested positive for a banned substance as happens in major league baseball in real life but like mlb (laughs) would not allow that to happen in their video game um and so you get this very like this very curated product. And it's like that with all licensed sports sims. And I think that my my view on this has only been hardened that really unlicensed sports sims are kind of the way to go um, because I've, I've picked up and have been playing a game called Motorsport Manager uh, on, on PC. Now, this is also on mobile. It started as a mobile game and came to PC eventually. And Motorsport Manager is exactly what it says on the tin. Um, You are running a racing team um, and you are going through all the trials and tribulations. You're developing car parts. um, You're managing race day strategies. um, You're building up your, your teams like complex over several years. And you have a chairman uh, that you're beholden to, you know, meeting up to certain goals in terms of like finishing position and stuff like that. And you negotiate with sponsors and, and all that jazz. And it's very similar to a game that came out, last year and is coming out with a new edition this year called F1 Manager, which is literally just like the F1 management simulator where you're doing all the same stuff where you're a team principal and managing the team's finances and car development and yada, yada, yada. But again, the problem is, is that you are getting the best possible version of F1 in the F1 Manager game, whereas the Motorsport Manager, because it's not licensed, can be really, really fucking goofy. So... The first thing that's cool is that through, like, DLCs that have come out, um, they have multiple different style of racing cars in the game. So, like, they have single-seaters, but there's also GT cars, and there's also endurance racing as well. And you can be the team principal for any one of those series, and then within each of those uh, race types, they have three tiers. So, like, F1, you know, has F1, F2, and F3, which are kind of like, you know, the top group and then on down for developmental. Um, They have kind of that same structure in all three of the racing series. And what's nifty about that is that when you're signing drivers or engineers or when you when you yourself like po- you know get poached by another racing team as a team principal, um, you can switch back and forth like you can cross in between series. Like you can start as the manager of like a, a team for in like a single seater series and a GT team could approach you and be like, "Hey, we want you to manage our, G- our GT car team." And you're like, oh, okay, cool. And, and and how those cars race and how you have to strategize for them 
and whatnot are going to be, you know, very different from one another because single seat racing is very different than than GT car racing, and it's very different than endurance racing. So, mm-hmm. like that that part's pretty nifty. Um, I like how they don't shy uh, about putting weird person like quirky personality traits on the drivers. So like one of the, you know, this, this game has a ton of systems and I don't want to get too in the weeds on one of this, on all the systems the game has, but they have things like, you know, when a driver works with an engineer for a number of weeks, like they develop a rapport and that unlocks like bonuses that the engineer can give that driver on race day and, and things of that nature, which is pretty cool. But like th- that drivers also have traits that can positively or negatively hamper them. So like my lead driver right now on my team, uh, he has a trait called crazy um, where he just like is like a conspiratorial nut, and because of that, like he like he pisses off every engineer that he works with. So like they never grow their relationship at all. So he never gets like the bonuses uh, that you can get from that. And he and I found out the other day, like my you know one of my uh, one of my staff members told me, oh the same driver by the way, uh, I think he's having an affair right now with it. With, 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 he's cheating on his wife, and that's making his focus go down on race days because because he's distracted by the fact that he has an affair. Um, you can get like, you can get like pay drivers. We're like, just like in real life where like, if you sign this guy, he has a personal sponsor that comes with him. That'll pay you money for racing him every weekend, like putting him in a race seat every weekend. They're like, look, we'll fucking pay you to put this dude in a car. Like <laughs> and if you're, if you're a struggling team uh, with a shoestring budget, like having a pay driver, pretty good coming in and be like, yeah, like I'll give you some laps and you know, you can drive in practice and get, and I'll get some money on the side uh, for this dude. Um, it's been really fun so far. Like I said, it is, it's sim light. Um, it's, I don't think it's as in depth as like the, uh, as like the F1 manager game probably is. Um, but it's still really fun, and it's it's a very casual game. Like, it's a game you can kind of play while you're listening to a podcast in the background and things like that. Um, and it's really fun, especially managing... Like, like the real gameplay comes, like, in managing the race day strategies because you are, you know, help, telling your both your drivers, like, how to, you know, whether they should be pushing or not and kind of adjust, you know, managing how they're working their tires and calling them in for pit stops and adjusting the pit strategy. Like, do you fix this part on the car that's starting to get a little dodgy, but there's only 10 laps in the race. And if you let it go, like he might finish, but it might also break and he might have a serious fucking problem. But if you fix it, it's going to add like seven seconds to your pit time. So can you really, you know, can you, and making those kind of split second calls, um, is, is a pretty good time. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's like dirt cheap right now. So if you, if you haven't think this might be interesting to play like team principal, um, in a racing game, uh, this is one to check out. I think it's also on sale in mobile on mobile right now. Since motorsport manager, um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's, it's really good. And it, like I said, cemented the belief that, uh, that unlicensed Sims, uh, are probably the best sports games that are out there right now. So I hope any aspiring developers that obviously can't get uh, an official license from a lot of these sports leagues, but can still put together a really fun sim like uh, sports game takes heed uh, and, and kind of broadens that market a little bit. Cause I feel like that all the air is taken up by all the licensed properties. It's um, this sounds like one of those quintessential dad games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like all the management games, right? Yeah. All the, Simulator games are dad games, right? Because <laughs> when you're a dad in a in a loving relationship with your spouse and children, um, you usually nobody listens to you. Uh, <laughs> so you can get one of these things and boss around the people in the sim. Uh, and I I I it's, this sounds really interesting. Like I don't yeah. know if I'd pick it up, but it sounds interesting. Like like with some like. Uh, roguelike type like like well this driver he's good but he's crazy you know what I mean (laughs) fortunately I plan I plan on upgrading from that one crazy dude at the end of this season uh, with somebody hopefully better because it because that's the other thing is like like you know you would expect in games like this like drivers come with like a star rating that show you how good they are and then they also have like a potential well this dude's like 30 years old and he is like he is a two and a half star driver and will be for the rest of his life. And I'm like, well, we 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 at MPX Racing or MPX Motorsports need to find someone that's gonna that's gonna take us ahead in the future. And so I need to uh, <laughs> I need to make sure that we uh, that we get shit going here. That is funny. Yeah. 
So I also uh, finished, yeah. yeah, the Diablo 4 campaign um, is done and dusted. And uh, Micah, I know that you that you finished this as well. So not, not that we need to talk spoilers, but I kind of want to talk about the campaign as a whole and then talk about uh, kind of the initial scrapings um, of the end game. I got to tell you, I was really impressed um, as far as the story goes and as far as the presentation goes um, for a Diablo game. Like, like this was, this was really well, well done, uh, well scripted, well acted. Um, and they actually made you like give a shit about the characters a little bit. Um, and the story actually like took some twists and turns and was, and was pretty interesting. What did you think about, about the campaign in four? I think this was, uh, the most interesting, like, like fly on the wall of a couple having a divorce ever right <laughs> like <laughs> it, it was um i yeah i actually really enjoyed the story um it was uh lilith is the the thing with with these games now and uh ubisoft does it a lot is you get this really interesting like compelling charismatic villain Mm -hmm. Um, but like they don't interact with the player until like one point in the game, right? It's usually at the very end and it's, I, I get it. It's supposed to build it up and build it up. But Lilith, while I, I enjoyed her as a character, she kind of was either one step behind or one step ahead. And I didn't really get it. I, I would have liked to interact with that character a little more mm -hmm. or, but but I, 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 but she's an interesting character. I, I do like her. Uh, and Arius is also a very interesting character. Um, this is kind of like the, this is like the theology that I'm interested in, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I told, this, I told my, I told my wife because she, um, she played three, um, but she didn't really know any of the backstory before that. And this game leans on a lot of like old Diablo lore, like even pre Diablo one lore that a lot of people might not know. Um, and I told her, I was like, you gotta, I like, I, I have the book of Cain. Um, like I have a physical copy of the book of Cain. I was like, you got, you got to read through the book of Cain. You get the whole, the whole backstory on the Diablo universe. Yeah. Like, like all my, all my atheist friends, right? Like, if, <laughs> like if you just, if you just play Diablo, you would find theology incredibly interesting. Uh, because it's just it's just the same nonsense that's like any other mythology, Greek mythology and and Egyptian mythology and all that. Uh, but with a religion that like is still like very much active, it's inter it like it's 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 weird, right? Because people have this like reverence for what they believe in, which is fine, and other people are treating it like fucking Jerry Springer. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I did like the uh, I did like the campaign. I liked it a lot. Um, that being said, uh, you know I'm gonna skip it every time I. I <laughs> well, yeah, no. Character. Once once you play it once, you don't <laughs> need to play it again. Um, I really like it's it's. I, I take your point about Lilith. I feel like the true villain of the game, from the player's perspective, is almost Elias, because um, he yeah. was very easy to hate. Um, so, and, and very punch in the face where the, and the, and the Lilith piece was almost, almost like an epilogue. Um, yeah. And I, I don't like, I wouldn't call her an 11th hour villain, mm -hmm. but, but I, I, I wish there was a little more, um, interaction and like, I get it. Right. Like I get it. Just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm essentially a mortal. I can't, you know, I interact with a God. Like what does a God have to like she, she's just like get out of here, right? right? Like if any, if anything, she's trying to convert me, right? I'll, um, I'll tell you what else was was cool. Um, I, and again, without spoiling anything, there's a character uh, that you run into throughout the game um, that's very important in the Diablo lore uh, that I wasn't expecting them to use in the way that they did. Um, and the way that the campaign ends, uh, it sets up for a very compelling um, second chapter uh, that's, I would assume, going to be explored in whatever the first DLC is that comes out. Um, for yeah, so. yeah, that, that that was my one like major like not criticism, but mm -hmm. like 
like, oh, okay, well, this is an obvious, like, it's, it's, this is a business, this is an obvious setup, like, I'm, I, I just kind of want stories that, like, have a beginning, middle, and end sometimes, mm-hmm. and I know this, yeah, I kind of knew that going in, like, since this is a persistent game, it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna have that, but. I was satisfied with it. Like, like I said, I, I like the presentation most of all. I, yeah. I think the story was uh, incredibly interesting, and I like the characters. Um, I am hitting uh, a wall. I hit I hit a wall with my first character. Mm-hmm. I got I got my source was up to like fifty something, and I got that itch to play another character. Yeah. Uh, so I started a barbarian, and now that barbarian is at like fifty five. And I don't want to start a new character because the season is getting ready to start. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, I, I think I'm just going to put it down for a while because, like, yeah. the road to 100 is is long and arduous. <laughs> I, I saw some stat that was, like, level 85 is halfway to 100. Yeah, like, it takes, apparently point. it takes as much XP to get from 85 to 100 as it takes <laughs> from 185, which... Uh... Damn. Now, now, what I will say is there there was a lot of critique um, when the game came out for the first couple of weeks because once you got past the campaign and once you were doing endgame stuff, um, nightmare dungeons were like the most, uh, the best way to, to gain XP, um, but not doing them the way the developers like, intended. So like you literally had to, like the mo- and this was the most efficient way to do it because of the amount of XP that was being given was to do, like, half of a specific dungeon and then literally, like, quit out of the game and then go back in and start the dungeon again and do half of it and quit out and go back in and do half. And so because, um, obviously, that's not how Blizzard would prefer you to play the game, um, they did significantly up the amount of XP that Nightmare Dungeons give you. Um, They also made it possible to fast travel to them um, once you've beaten the campaign, whether or not you have... Uh, found them on the map. So that's that I thought was interesting too. Like even if you haven't found the like uncovered it on the the dungeon on the map yet, it still will give you a fast travel point to go. Oh wow. To to got kind of warp right in there. Um also Whispers got buffed big time as well. So Whispers is another one of the end game activities. Apparently that's supposed to be like the primary way to level a new character from one to fifty. So like when you start your season, like you should probably do a lot of whispers to get your character like leveled up to fifty so you can start dumping um, Paragon stuff in. I really like the the Paragon board and kind of how they give you a little bit more autonomy as far as like what you how you want to level your character up post fifty um, to kind of upgrade their stats and things like that. I, I and, and I think it's also nifty that they kind of let you preview what the next boards are going to be that you'll unlock so you can kind of see the direction that you want to take for future planning. I mean, it still takes a really long fucking time to earn Paragon points because like Micah said, the, the level grind, um, is not as easy, um, as in other Diablo games, or at least not for like, not super hardcore players, which me and Micah are not. Um, but I've been enjoying the end game so far. Um, I did also venture into the fields of hate. Um, and that's been uh, a bit of an up and down experience. The only problem with the fields of hate is that there's no, there's no real party balancing. So, like, if you run up on a group of, like, three people and you're playing solo, you're probably going to get your teeth kicked in. <laughs> so, and, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, so, that's a bit of a bummer. Um, I've not fought any of the world bosses yet because I haven't been on at a time where they happen to have been spawned. So, uh, that's something I'm looking forward to to checking out at some point as well. So, But so far, so good. And, and what's cool about this one, about this Diablo game, is they put so much stuff in the game that there's still, like, so much to do just from a check all the boxes and complete all the areas standpoint. Like, there's so many dungeons that I did. Like, like the vast majority of dungeons I didn't touch during the campaign. There's still a lot of areas to discover. I didn't do too many of the strongholds throughout the campaign as well. So, like, there's still a lot of game content um, that I can do as well. Um, And my wife is very much, like, a completionist in that respect. So she's anxious to, like, uncover the whole map and check all those boxes and... And yada, yada, yada. So, um, yeah, pretty good endgame so far for Diablo 4. I'm I'm sure they will still keep up with tweaking it and and idealizing it. And then the new season, like Micah said, starts, I think, sometime this month, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I know it's July. I I just don't know. um, 
I just don't know when in July. Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't uh, know that they've set a date yet. I just think they said July. So, so we'll see what happens okay. there. Uh, any any updates on uh on uh what did you call it last week? Uh, uh demon demon will uh, demon Satan will might weep. Yeah, Satan <laughs> might weep. There you go. That's what I should have titled the show last week. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I so so the game opens up. And, uh, and the, uh, the main character, Jon Snow, uh, kind of has to, he, he gets a little more personality and his, his best friend, uh, Sansa gets a little more personality. Uh, but at what cost? At what cost? (laughs) Um, (laughs) the, the, there, (laughs) There are Game of Thrones parallels that I can make, but I don't want to spoil anything for people. Uh, but so, but those two characters got to grow up uh, real fast. And but that first act, I, I'm in the second act, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least I believe it's the second act. I, I've seen enough movies that I know a story structure uh, when an act is over. Um, and yeah, the first act is real slow. Right, first, like when you are when you are young, Jon Snow, it is very very slow, and um, or no, it's not slow. It when you're young, Jon Snow, it's it's fine. Two hours setting everything up, I get it. Uh, when you are adult, Jon Snow, it, it it is it is slow, and it is you know it's still more world building, but it's like the type of world building that's like, hey, this world is is full of bigots and racists. And and we are gonna beat you over the head with it, uh, to the point where they are literally uh, the the bearers, the black people of the, the 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 game, essentially, are literally in fields, um, being chastised by the people who uh, are essentially the, the the white people in the game, and um, and you know the big. So I, I'll give away this part of the story. The big, the 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 big blight that is that is climate change that is happening. Right, um, the world is, the world is kind of powered by these giant crystals because it's a Final Fantasy game, right? Mm-hmm. And these these crystals are like the size of mountains, and you know they are essentially the the greatest resource of this land to the point where cities pop up around these giant crystals because that's where like the oil is right (laughs) um well the reason the blight is happening is because these crystals exist so the terrorist organization that Jon Snow uh has kind of aligned himself with is like hey if we want to stop climate change, we got to stop using oil, right? <laughs> like, so we got to we got to take these things out. But if we take them out, we we will hurt uh, the people. We we might help the planet in the long run, mm-hmm. but we will uh, greatly inconvenience uh, the people in the short term. Uh, and that is the dilemma that Jon Snow uh, has to, has to kind of wrestle with. And in the second act, like the things happen in the first act and the second act it's five years later. Um, the people that he's trying to liberate don't like his ass because he was able to accomplish one of those feats, right? Like you, you destroyed this thing. And now, and, and, and now the white people are going to, and now the white people are, are, are cracking down on us even more. Right. You're not helping. Right. You're supposed to be one of us. You're supposed to be helping. You're not helping. And this is where what he's kind of wrestling with. And this is where I I am in the uh, in the second act. And um, it's opening up a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, 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 I, I think I'm starting to see why uh, people I don't know. I don't know why people are going crazy over this game. <laughs> I, I really don't like. Oh, it's a nine out of ten. This is, this is perfect. Like this is the greatest Final Fantasy since whenever. I, I don't understand that, but I I don't want to necessarily I don't want to necessarily put it down, but I'm not in a rush to get through it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you see, you seem at least more bullish than you were a week ago. 
I was I was a little upset a week ago. So how like, how long, now now question how long did it take you to get to this point in the game? Oh man, like hours, man. Like hours and hours. Like like if I were playing a character action game, I I'd be like three quarters of the way through like a Devil May Cry five or something like that. Okay. Before I got to this. So point. so what you're so, telling me is that since 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 you're using the Game of Thrones comparison, I will just continue that that metaphor so it's like if game of thrones were to be like hey like the show gets really good right around like the middle of season two but you still need to watch the first season and a half because you need it to, un to yeah. understand the story <laughs> that's going yeah on. and i don't and look man i don't like that i don't like that at all people were like well i'm gonna give a show four episodes and if it doesn't hook me in four episodes then i'm not gonna watch no no no, a show should be able to at least hold your interest enough to want to see a second episode. And if it doesn't, yeah. then turn it off. Well, especially because the pilot like, like the pilot is literally made to sell to a network. Like like if the pilot's yes. bad, <laughs> then, then, right. you're, then you're in really bad shape. Exactly. Like I I remember telling Jay, I'm like Succession is is Game of Thrones with the Murdoch family. You will love it. And he resisted it for a while because he didn't like the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, all right, I get it. Um, but if I am able to plot, like, I'm telling you that this is going to be good and I'm your best friend. Listen to me. But at the same time, like, I was, uh, uh, and I know Stephanie Sterling used this analogy. I almost, I, I didn't watch Breaking Bad until it was over mm -hmm. because that first season stunk. It didn't stink, but it just, it was meandering. Mm -hmm. And that's what this first act does. It kind of, it kind of meanders for the most part. Like there's a lot of it that's, there's a lot of it that's just like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to beat you over the head with how fucking racist these people are. Mm -hmm. And I don't need that in my entertainment, yo. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> it, it's just, it's just, I don't, I don't know. Quick, it uh, is a good, it's, it's a good game, but quick tangential question for you before you, uh, before you sell the fine people on our wares. Um, best television pilot, in your opinion, ever. Oh Jesus! Um, for, for, from your personal perspective. Best like 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 what like what pilot really fucking got you in, on a show? Uh, I don't know. It has to be something phenomenal because I'm usually not a TV person, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't. Uh, it, so it, it's probably an HBO show. I don't mm -hmm. want to say Succession, even though I love that show. Um, I I I don't know. I might have to default to that just because I I'm not. I'm not big on TV. Like I watch TV because my wife watches TV. Okay. Uh, the you know correct I mean? answer um, is Miami Vice. That is that is the that is the correct answer. It's an all time. It's it's an all time. It's, it's a movie, Micah. Like the pilot's a fucking movie, and it's balls to the wall from tip to tail. It's got the it's it's got the pilot, Micah. The pilot has the most iconic scene in the show's history. The very first episode. It's the best. I was I was not expecting. <laughs> I was expecting like some prestige. No, television it's show. my it's Miami Vice, which what which was prestige television back in 1984. I will have you know that's when the networks ruled the day. Uh, listeners, I am curious uh, to hear your uh, fa your your favorite TV pilots of all time, which you can uh, which you can let us know by going to densepixels.com slash fans. And allow me to hand the ball to my to my co-host. When you go to densepixels.com slash fans, you'll get invited to our Discord, uh, where you can answer questions like, what is the best television pilot of all time? And then you can shock your friends with uh, with a, a show that came out when you were when when you were probably three or four years I, old. Was I even alive when Miami Vice debuted? Let me check that out <laughs> while you're while you're going through the rest of the ad read. <laughs> Uh, we talk about a lot of stuff in there, including uh, F1 and wrestling and video games and video game news and and uh, hey, if you wanna if you wanna help uh, program if you wanna help produce the show, 
drop uh, some video game news stories that you would like us to talk about in the general section. Uh, if you want to uh, contribute to the show um, and, and have your questions adjudicated, uh, go to the post office and, and we will answer any questions there uh, at densepixels.com slash fans. Uh, go to youtube.com slash densepixels, hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell button uh, and all that stuff that people who get paid a lot of money to sit in front of a camera and talk to you uh, say to do. Uh, we'll get there one day, maybe. <laughs> uh, if, if our, if our boss, uh, is done embezzling by, and, and fleeing to another country. So I'm saying like, like it's, funds. it's, it's possible he might've moved to like a tax haven country. Like, like this dude is out there <laughs> buying like $65 coffee at this like high end coffee shop. Was it $65 or was it 65 well, I'm pesos? I'm pretty sure it's 65 pesos. Yeah. So it was like two cents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jay's, to Jay's, Jay's whole life is the fucking scene from Eurotrip where they're in that Eastern Block hotel and they pay and they pay for shit with like the change in their pockets. So <laughs> go to uh, subscribe to all of our shows, including Nerdpocalypse, which is back, Black on Black Cinema, which is probably coming back next week, Coming Distractions, which is coming back whenever I get a chance to watch a movie, uh, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast, which is back it's officially. Um, Go to densepixels.com slash premium for $5 a month or $50 for the year. You get access to all of the back catalog, including the airing of grievances, No Time to Bleed, The Men with the Golden Tongues, which uh, I said is coming back uh, in July. So um, probably towards the end of the month. Uh, upstage conversation and the full hour and a half, two hour-ish episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. Um, I'm your Every vice... Week aired the pilot uh, episode of its show uh, two weeks, literally two weeks before I was born. So, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the news stories this week have a real international flair to them. Um, we have taken one of America's favorite scapegoats and sent it overseas. So um, I did not hear about the story. Um, but in France uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a 17-year-old delivery driver uh, that was fatally shot by police um, when they should not have done so. So again, that's something else that we're importing over to other countries now is apparently unjustified police <laughs> violence. Um, and be, and in result of that, there have been uh, rising tensions between French police and the residents of the neighborhood that this that this child uh, was murdered by police in, and French citizens have started to to riot. Um, and to and to protest uh, this happening, um, instead of declaring a state of emergency, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron um, decided to just fucking send the troops out to the streets to to impose order, uh, which has not made uh, people very happy. Uh, and he and he's not taking you know responsibility and saying, "Oh, the police fucked up." He's saying, "Oh, no, 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 it's it's the it's social media's fault. They're playing a role in fueling this." unrest uh and and so he's trying to work with companies to to kind of remove this content from uh from their from their platforms uh which you know for a guy that's you know he he, he is like a like i would say like a conservative liberal like a centrist in the truest word a uh, little little fashy little fashy tendencies from from Emmanuel macron on this uh but the reason we're talking about this on this show and not on Look Forward Political Podcast, is because uh, he also said, uh, quote, we sometimes have the feeling that some of them, referring to the protesters, are living out in the streets the video games that have intoxicated them. Like, it's video games' fault that uh, that people are protesting <laughs> uh, the, the murder of a child by police in France. Uh a couple of things. I, I I've been to Paris a couple of times. Me and my wife love it. We we're going to retire there. Um, it it we we fell in love with the place. Um, Paris is just like any other city, and and those Parisians love to protest. Um, it's it's ar like, arguably like protest is like if if anyone fucking owns the fucking flag of civil disobedience, <laughs> it's the French. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, a long, like a, a long and storied history. 
I, of, uh, I feel of... like I feel like I feel like Macron doesn't know his own history, right. man. Like like they like they'll lop your head off over there, man. Like it's not it's not a game to them. Like like we when we had a we had a friend who uh, did a, a work detail over there. And we stayed with her for for like a week, and and uh, she was telling us about all this stuff and. She was. She would tell us about like the ga- the, the the garbage protests that mm-hmm. that w- with a garbage strike and just like nah yo they quick to just be like nah fuck this like they they're my kind of people they're very snooty they're very they, uppity, a couple like, a man, couple of months ago we talked about this one forward like they like the French government was floating the idea of raising the retirement age in France from sixty two to sixty four. And those motherfuckers were in the streets like the yeah, next day. That's know? what I'm saying, yo. That's what I'm saying. Like French people have no qualms right. with marching on anything, yo. Yeah. Like, get out of here. So no, it's not video games, right? It's your fucking government. Um and and uh you know, one of the times we me and my wife were were there. I, I, I didn't know much about the story. I knew there was uh I knew there was some riots going on. I knew that the, that there was a, a child that was that was murdered. Um I said to I said to my wife, I said, remember that guy we talked to at the bar? Remember what he said? She was like, Yeah, I said, I bet you this kid I don't know anything about this kid. I said, I bet you this kid is either Middle Eastern or he is like or he is like is like is Islamic or or something of that nature, right? Because uh, we went to a bar, and you know, I was I'm an American, and this guy, you know, he's talking to me about America, and he's just like, we're talking about race relations, mm-hmm. right? And he's like, yeah, man, I don't understand what's up with the race relations in America, man. I'm tr- you know, we're having this dialogue, and he's just like, ah, man, we don't care what color you are, man. You, you know, black, white, you know, whatever, man. It's all good. Just don't be Muslim. Yeah. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, yo. <laughs> the fuck <laughs> uh, and he said it with a straight face too man like he wasn't joking like he wasn't yeah. playing man and look part of it is because they just had a, a um a act of terror uh, i think it was like a subway bombing or something over there uh, a couple of months beforehand but yeah he was dead serious man and i said i bet you this kid is like is like muslim or yeah. something like that man well and, and again that doesn't surprise me either because because as much as as much as uh you know like evangelical christians like kind of you know have their way over here and and you know christianity is still the uh is is it is it still the majority religion or is it just the the um plurality religion i don't i don't know if it's been surpassed yet um i feel like it's just I the plurality at this point uh I mean, maybe. Yeah. Um, all I know is we are the most persecuted people on the face of the planet. Of course, at yes. any given I'm, moment. I'm, I'm hand waving away. Um, the uh, the countries of Western Europe are really into Christianity. Like they're 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 big fans, big fans over there. So yeah, uh, yeah. The, so the the the, uh, the source of the Crusades. Yeah. yeah, I think they might be. Uh, I think they might be into it. <laughs> so, so uh, yes, again, we said it before, we said it again, this goes back to our very first episode. Uh, stop blaming video games for stuff that is obviously not the fault of video games. You idiots. Um, yeah. Also, other new- um, <laughs> yeah. Get, your, get your politics out of my games. Yes, of course. Please. Um, over to the world of international business. So, so Micah, you might not realize this, and, and people who don't follow... Um, European sports leagues, or well, really international sports leagues. It's not just the European thing. It's, it's it's very much just a non North American thing. But the big sports leagues around the world usually have a title sponsor um, that kind of that that kind of hedge their branding. So like for for the Premier League, uh, they're sponsored by the bank Barclays. So like they're the Barclays Premier League, right? And and you know every other major you know European soccer league has a title sponsor. So for the longest time. Um, La Liga, which is the uh, which is the top soccer league in Spain, uh, was sponsored by a Spanish bank called uh, Santander. So they were always La Liga Santander for many, many, many years. Well, they have dropped the uh, the branding agreement with Santander, uh, and now uh, the the home of Barcelona Football Club and Real Madrid uh, is going to be La Liga EA Sports, as <laughs> as EA Sports is now the title the title sponsor uh, for the Spanish top flight. 
And the the funny part about this, the funny part about the story, is that EA is also um, the sponsor for the second tier of of uh, of La Liga uh, soccer as well. Um, but they're not going to be, you know, La Liga EA Sports 2 or anything like that. No, no, no. They've decided to brand it uh, after their the animation engine that exists within FIFA. So the second tier of Spanish soccer is going to be La Liga Hypermotion. Is, is going to be the name of the fucking second tier of, yeah, of Spanish on, yeah. soccer. Come on, yo. What are we doing? Is this like the European equivalent of like, hey, the Pelicans are going to play at the Smoothie Center? The, no, because because King a lot Center. of times, a lot of times they still have that too. So like all of the clubs have their own stadiums. Now, now some of the stadiums do not have um, a corporate sponsor. So like Tottenham Hotspur, my beloved football club. Um, they play at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. They don't play at like Tottenham Hotspur Stadium brought to you by, you know, fucking, you know, M and T Bank, right, or anything like that. Um, but there are definitely some stadiums that have that have that corporate uh, sponsor on the outside. Um, but that's that's not a widely thing. No, but what what you're going to see on La Liga television constantly is you're just going to see that EA Sports logo just thrown in your face um, incessantly. And and the other funny part is too in print, um, it is like the actual official way that you that you write this out um, is in all caps. So like so like it's it's La Liga EA Sports like it's not La Liga EA Sports but it's it's the former of those things, um, which is very funny to me. It's also very funny to me because um, I, I I just think back to when FIFA wanted a billion dollars for the FIFA name, and EA Sports was like kick rocks. And the president of FIFA was just like, oh, he's like, true fans will come to the FIFA football game and EA Sports will die on the vine. And and meanwhile, EA Sports is like, no, we're, we're cool, man. Don't, <laughs> don't, we're good. We're, we, we, we've got a sponsorship for a whole ass league. So don't, uh, don't worry about us, Johnny, Johnny Infantino, which is, which is the head of FIFA's actual name. <laughs> what is it? Johnny Infantino. Wow. Wow. That sounds like um that sounds like uh what's Johnny T V Johnny T V. What is his that what is the John Morrison? Yes. Uh you know how John Morrison changes his <laughs> surname after every fucking uh anytime he redebuts somewhere. He's Johnny T V yes. right now. And 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 and, he, is... and and what Johnny Infantino looks like is he looks like a version of Jeff Bezos that was the, the original image was on a sixteen by nine monitor mm -hmm. but the image is stretched on a 21 by 9 monitor that's what that's what Johnny Infantino <laughs> looks like so <laughs> he's like he's oh like a wider god. headed Jeff Bezos oh my god well speaking of which uh go to densepixels.com <laughs> slash amazon for all of your uh amazon purchases when you go to densepixels.com slash amazon uh you help uh you help uh us uh, you help Gianni Infantino, um, and uh, we uh, we get a little bit of a we get a little bit of a kickback, and you get exactly what you want. Uh, Prime, it's Prime see. Day soon. The Prime the Prime Day the Prime Day deals are starting up. That's right. That's right. You can uh, you can you can go uh, you can go now, and then you can go uh, during Prime Day. And now let's see uh, what is here when i go to densepixels.com slash amazon for all of my amazon purchases what do i want to type in no none of this stuff looks interesting to me none of this <laughs> stuff looks interesting there's a lot of baby stuff right a lot of baby crap we need a new car seat no one wants to hear about that there's a bunch of hair care products nobody wants to care nobody nobody wants to hear about black woman's hair care products <laughs> I was to say it's probably probably very different than my hair care products i would imagine <laughs> Um, I typed in Gianni Infantino into, um, into densepixels.com slash Amazon. And, uh, the first thing that comes up is the official history of the FIFA World Cup. Uh, it's a hardcover book, um, who, by the FIFA, I'm say, by, the FIFA by the FIFA World Football Museum and Gianni Infantino. Okay. That, uh, that is, that is not a book that you probably are going to get a very accurate depiction 
of the history of the FIFA World Cup from. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is uh, it is available in hardcover, you know, like an actual book, uh, and you can get it for forty dollars um, when you uh, when you go to densepixels dot com slash Amazon. It's got a foreword from uh, from Gianni Infantino, uh, which is which just sounds funny to me. Gianni Infantino, like it just it, that name. That name sounds funny to me. I, I don't know. Yeah. What is it with the, what was the other guy's name? Sepp Blatter Sep, Sep or Blatter, something like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like you just got to have weird, you just got to have rust, a wrestling name. Uh, and then you can run <laughs> FIFA. <laughs> uh, so Motorsport Manager is not the only new game that I've been playing. And, I, and I'm going to preface this by saying I know that we have had a long running bit on this show, especially when we covered new releases. Uh, that we have always poked fun at the bevy of insert noun, me, um, insert noun uh, simulator games that 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 are that are out there, right? And there's a ton of them. Um, but I have found one uh, that was critically lauded, and I am losing so much time uh, to this game right now, and that Micah. Is Power Wash Simulator? I heard about this. <laughs> it's it's so it's so relaxingly fun, Micah. Especially if you're a crazy person like me, uh, and and has my OCD brain, where I see this like fucking, you know, like like yesterday I, I finished up a big playground that was just filthy, dirt all over it. I took out my power washer and I cleaned the shit out of it. And I was listening to podcasts the entire time. It is it is the best podcast game because you really don't have to put a whole lot of thought into what you're doing. You're just using yeah. a power washer. Like 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 the most like the most thought that needs to go into it is which nozzle do I want to use? Do I do I want the most coverage or is there like a really nasty spot of dirt and grime that I need to clean off? So I need something with a more concentrated stream. So I need to go with a smaller smaller angle nozzle. It doesn't cover as much, but it but it, the water comes out you know, with more force and, and do I need to use like a cleaning product on this and, and like, well, what part am I missing? And it's just very satisfying. Like, and and also me who really likes finding more efficient ways to do things like, like kind of at learning as you go, like the most efficient way to clean this house. Like, like what's the best way to tackle it? Do you just do a portion at a time? Do you, you know, do you try to do like all the walls and then all the windows and then go up to the roof and do the whole roof? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, but it's fun because you can just sit here and you can power wash things. And the game is very earnest in how it presents power washing. It's just like, oh, your friends like need you to help clean things. They're going to pay you money. And then you can use that money to go to the power washing store and buy a more powerful power wash gun or new nozzles for your, for your gun or extension rods so that you can, you know, have, have longer reach and, and, and extended coverage. And they've, re- and because this game has been popular, um, they have a lot of DLC, which is stuff that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see. So they have like a Tomb Raider DLC where you can clean like the Croft Manor of power washing stuff. They have a Final Fantasy VII themed DLC where you can clean objects in the Final Fantasy VII universe like a Mako reactor with your power washing gun. Uh, there's a Warhammer 40,000 DLC that's coming out later this year. There's a SpongeBob DLC that just came out. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the SpongeBob DLC right now, um, where you are at the bottom of Bikini Bottom, I mm-hmm. guess. You're 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 at Bikini Bottom and you're just kind of power washing uh that pineapple under the sea. Yeah. Um that's th- this is hilarious. <laughs> uh, I don't appreciate the uh the Tomb Raider one where it's like this rich aristocrat who this rich British aristocrat who steals from tombs <laughs> to put in her own personal museum mm-hmm. hires me to 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 wash her windows. Look, she pays she uh, pays you like a thousand dollars, and it's probably Winston that's hiring you, not actually like Lana not Paul. so not even no. the lady of the man. <laughs> the, the butler, the butler is hiring you. So. <laughs> uh, look, man, I get it. I get it. The, uh, I don't get it for twenty five dollars, but I get it. It it does look kind of. Uh, I I can see the appeal. Like it delivers right? the content for twenty five dollars. I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 I 
I'm telling you. And again, like I like I could play this when my wife comes to hang out with me and we can chat and I can just sit there and just fucking just fucking spray stuff, man. It gets aggravating at points because like sometimes like you thought you think you clean this like thing off and it's like, oh it's not fully clean yet. And you're just like, fuck. Yeah, you gotta get the you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, gotta get, get down. Flash. You, gotta, you you you, well, you can get down in like you can get down like prone positions. So you can like get the like the underside of like the steps and shit like that. <laughs> Yo, they're playing tic-tac-toe in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. This is kind of like one of those make-your-own-fun games. And then, yeah. by the way, like, you know. Yeah, I get it. It's funny. Yes. Square published this? Squ- apparently, Square published this version, which is how they got the crossovers that you wouldn't expect. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, there you go. Uh, here's, a, here's another job simulator. For yeah. For all of you that want a job, but, like, don't want to actually work <laughs> well and, and now it's having the adverse effect which which you know, this this game is probably secretly funded by big power washing um because now like i like i look at my house and like man i really wish i had a power washer so i could you know so i could <laughs> clean some stuff <laughs> get get some of this dirt and grime off my front porch that's hilarious so um we only have one non-carry related question because we forgot to put out the call to the post office, but that's okay. Um, cause Johnny asked question, uh, Carrie question about her tattoos, but she's not on this week. Um, so cam asked because raw was in Baltimore, uh, this past week, were any of you hooligans responsible for our man, dirty Dom getting booed while eating at Jimmy's famous seafood, uh, in Baltimore. I guess, I guess Dominic Mysterio got booed at Jimmy's. Um, that's, uh, one that's funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> two, I, uh, you know, Jimmy's is is pretty famous. I've I've never been to Jimmy's. I I've um, I've said this on the show before. Like, it blows my mind that this like lauded seafood restaurant that is beloved by professional wrestlers across the globe that have performed in the, in this city is literally five minutes from my house, and it's in an area of town that you would never expect such a restaurant to be. Like it's 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 right outside of Dundalk. Yeah, like it's so yeah. I so I've never been to Jimmy's mm-hmm. because I got this Jimmy's confused with another Jimmy's. Mm-hmm. I got I got Jimmy's famous seafood confused with Jimmy's seafood mm-hmm. at Fell's Point. Okay, no, it's not and, that. And I thought it was that, and I went in there one day, and I'm like, this is terrible. This is <laughs> god awful. Like, what are people like so going gaga for? Well, this and, and, this and is here's well, terrible. here's the thing about Jimmy's famous seafood. It's fine. Like, it's fine. Like, it's it's good. There are better seafood restaurants. Mm. That's all. Yeah, that's all I, I'm saying. So, I wanna I wanna go, but like, it's off of Hollabird Avenue, so there's probably like three strip clubs on the way no there's no there's no strip clubs around it there's just dilapidated un, <laughs> unoccupied small shopping centers that are that are near. Ah. there there and so there's jimmy's and then like down the block from that is vinnie's cafe which is actually really good a uh, really good italian restaurant um which i just had pizza from tonight ironically enough but yes so so jimmy's jimmy's is right there and again it's fine i i i get jimmy's for lunch i'll, I'll have it door dashed Every now and then, like maybe once every every couple of months, and I'll get it. I'm like, oh, this is pretty good, and 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 then I don't think about Jimmy's again for several months thereafter. So, like I said, I'm like, whenever I hear about like wrestlers and Jimmy's and like, oh, like they went to Jimmy's and great and they love it, I'm just like, I guess, <laughs> like like, I mean, like maybe you know. maybe just because I have have access and I'm a local and so it doesn't like wow me that much. But I mean, they don't they don't know any better. But look, I, yeah. I can't talk. I've never been. I, I confused it with a hole in the wall that that doesn't exist anymore. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it. Oh, that's right. I can't look at stuff on Twitter anymore. I was trying to, <laughs> I was, I was trying to go to their to, to their Twitter to see if they had anything like. All right, you know, all right. That, that's a whole nother like. That's a whole nother. <laughs> All right. All oh, right, we've got no, time. No. I like we can do our own <laughs> post office. Like how how badly like so like you know how like like you've seen the producers, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole point of it was yeah. like let's make the, the worst fucking thing possible. Right. So that like, like is Twitter is Twitter somehow secretly insured 
so that Elon Musk will make like a hundred billion dollars if the site torpedoes because there's no other explanation for how he's running it other than the fact that he'll somehow make a shitload of money if it if it fails oh god yeah man i just <laughs> <laughs> like i don't get it man and then people like this guy's a genius like nah yo he's like he's like a competent project manager like that's I, it. I don't even know if that's the case because he sure makes a lot of decisions without consulting the, subject matter experts. Right, and that's me being incredibly <laughs> generous, yeah. right? Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Like he he went and he 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 bought this thing uh, because he had his feelings hurt, and and he doesn't know what to do with it. It, it's it's like that it's like that Heath Ledger Joker quote like I I I I'm a dog chasing cars I wouldn't know what to do when I got you know if I caught it's, one it's so crazy because he's like he's like trying to brute force people into buying Twitter Blue subscriptions but it's like he doesn't realize that it's like oh no either you're going to get Twitter Blue or your Twitter experience is going to be severely hampered and he doesn't realize there's like hidden option C which is, or I just stop using Twitter. Like, like you're making yeah, this yo. product so bad that I'm just not going to use it anymore. Right. <laughs> and all you need is for some, for like there, I'm assuming there are other Twitter style social media so, apps out there. So all you need is one to hit. And well, that's so it. there hasn't, there hasn't been one um, that has really grabbed the market share. A lot of people think that blue sky could be that one because it's it was started by Jack who you know started Twitter and so but it but it still doesn't have it's still a very siloed right now um and not enough people are on it to really make it a viable alternative but if they were if they were to, if blue sky were to open up the floodgates and people who were dissatisfied with Twitter could migrate over there and most of the people that they follow also came over there I think that Twitter could potentially have uh, a serious issue on their hands. Ish. Not that they already don't. I mean, like, again, like, how do you, the, the, the limiting how many tweets you can view per day thing is one thing, right? Which, which was a self-inflicted wound anyway, because like the reason that you can't, why you had to do this is because you fired so much of your engineering staff that like, you know, you literally can't keep up with the back end right now, which is one thing. But the thing that's arguably more egregious, like you're really not gonna let people view tweets without a, without a login. Like, that's how yeah, you get yo. people to create accounts, man. Like, you have to, like, get people in the door and then be like, oh, like, I want to be here all the time and see this stuff on demand. Like, I don't want to just have to, you know, Google it and come across. Like, your, your <laughs> tweets are out of Google search results, my dude. Like, how fucking dumb are you? This guy's an idiot. He's so stupid. How Like, how is every company that he's run not collect? I, I guess because truly, like, in, in those other instances, he's not the one that's actually, like, running the day-to-day like like yeah. like the vision like like I guess at Tesla like because that company was already kind of solidified when he got there, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are making like the the important decisions there, and he's just kind of like doing this broad overarching strategy shit. I don't know. Like I said, he's an idiot. I don't know why people think that he's smart. Um, Again, rich. Uh, like an app apparently having money means you're smart. Well, that no, and that's what doesn't. I was gonna say. Like that's that's something that Jay has always. <laughs> always said and and he's 100 percent correct is that stupid people confuse wealth with intelligence and and yeah, they think that if you're rich you must be smart because how else could you be rich if you weren't smart i just <laughs> no nah, yo it's not it it's not it i guarantee you that famous person that you don't like and think is dumb is wealthier than you so uh, <laughs> that doesn't like that doesn't I mean, all right, yo, all right. I, I just, I can't, I can't, man, I can't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, well, that that is it for the show's begin. You can submit questions to us every week by going to densepixels.com slash fans and posting them in the post office for us to read and answer on the show. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this show as well as all the other TNP Studio shows wherever you download fine podcasts. You can also go to youtube.com slash densepixels and subscribe to us there where we post this podcast in video format every single week. Uh, that is it for us this week. Thank you all very much for watching and listening, and we will see you all the next time. See ya. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.